Are you in sickness, in deep thoughts, drowning in depression? You feel stuck and nowhere to turn. And Mac Ministries and Caris Bible College invites you to the healing experience. This 25th of May, 2023, starting at 5 p.m. at Park Royal Mall, 5th floor, along Buganda Road. God is a faithful God. When you believe on Him, your healing is always available. Your healing is today. To all our partners of Andrew Mark Ministries in Uganda, we thank you and appreciate you for the financial support you render to us to take the gospel as far and deep in the world. Truly because of you, the gospel reaches the whole body of Christ. We speak a blessing unto your lives and families and exceeding prosperity. Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. It's about the purpose of God in my life, in everybody else's life, is in us, through us. You know what, little me, I can go out and do big things for God. And that, that keeps me going, to know that every day I can wake up and God's gonna use little me in a big way. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm continuing to teach on how to find, follow, and fulfill God's will. And this is nearing the end of my second week. On this teaching, and I'm just barely getting started on it, really. This is something that has been a big, big factor in my life. And I've written a book on it entitled on how to find, follow, and fulfill God's will. Yesterday I was talking about how that Moses knew God's will for his life. That's what the scripture says in Acts chapter 7. He knew, he supposed that his brethren would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them, but they understood not. And so he knew God's will. But he didn't know how God was going to accomplish it. He just reasoned and supposed that God was going to use his position. In the Egyptian government, to bring deliverance to his brothers, the Jews. And did you know it made perfect sense? But it was wrong. Here's the logic Moses was born during a time that the Israelites were growing and multiplying so much. That the Egyptians became fearful that if, uh, you know, some other nation attacked the Egyptians, that the Israelites would join with the invaders and overthrow Egypt. So the Pharaoh made a command. This is over in Exodus chapter 1 and chapter 2. He commanded all of the Israelites to kill their male children. And Moses was born during this time, but his parents, they believed that God had a purpose for Moses. And so they kept him alive. 
and they hid him for three months. But when they couldn't hide him any longer, Moses' mother put him in a little basket and daubed it with pitch. And put it in the river Nile, which was a huge step of faith. <laughs> to think that, man, you just put a baby into a little basket and just set them afloat in the river Nile. Kakati, echokubanti ya sobula okukwa tomwana na muteka mchibaya eche ntongo na ateno musindi kakumazi kumugana ilo umulekeyo. But apparently this was uh, desperate times called for desperate measures. Kakati, bwino biyali visera biyakati ya baga e biyali vieta aga echokudamunga na chuchi akati ya baga. And Jacobed, Moses' mother, uh, put him in this basket and just set him afloat and it floated right under Pharaoh's daughter and Pharaoh's daughter found him and took Moses to be her own child and he was raised in Pharaoh's house. The one who commanded all male Israelites to be killed wound up paying for the raising of a male Israelite who would eventually be the one who brings deliverance to the Jews. Kakati mubuta manya agenda kuza omwana ata agendo kufuko mununuzi uwe guangali ya Israeli mumakage genyini nyini. I mean this was supernatural. Kakati chino chali chabu wakatonda dala. It was supernatural that Moses survived but not only survived he survived in the household of Pharaoh. Kakati te chali bubezi chabu wakatonda woka nti okubanti mwesa ya wona neno okubanti ateji ya wonera yali ate mnyumba ya falao. And it says here in Acts chapter 7, I read this. On yesterday's program, it says he was learned in all of the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. That's out of Acts chapter 7, verse 22. Kakati and so Moses not only survived but thrived and became one of the most educated men, one of the most powerful men. This is extra biblical material, but I've actually read in commentaries. That Moses was a mighty general. That went and conquered the Ethiopians. And brought in all of this spoil. As a matter of fact, in that movie, The Ten Commandments, which I like the movie, but there's a lot of non-scriptural parts to it. Things that they missed. One of the things they got right, they showed Moses bringing in all of these peacocks. And these jewels and these fruit and all of these kind of things. And that is based on uh, secular documents that it show that Moses was a mighty general that conquered people. So here's Moses who survived death. 
Kakati huno wanu tulaba Musa e yali amazo kuono kufa. When he was decreed to die, ngati yali ala giduo kufa. He not only lived, but he lived in Pharaoh's household. Tiyakuma tiyawuna buwonyi, wabula tumulaba anga agenze, nasuli ya dalamu nyumba ya farao. He became one of the mightiest generals. Ida na ofuko muku wa general ya baliba singo amanyi mumisiri. He was learned in all of the wisdom of the Egyptians. Ngira yali ya igiriziwa, mumagezi gona agaba misiri. He was either second or third in line for the throne. Chiso wako kubanti yali wakubiri wa wakusa tukubantua baliba gendo kusikire ngoma. Ya a person who is destined to die at birth it would have been easy for Moses just to think well God wants me to deliver the Jews of course he's going to use my position this is why I'm in this position he's going to use the clout that I have here the authority that I have and I as a mighty Egyptian leader I'm going to bring deliverance to the Jews. Iranzi Musa ngo mufuzi wa Misri omukubakuru ba wano nzikiriza ngenda kuleto obununuzi eri eri aba Israeli. It made perfect sense. Chali chikola amakuru. But it was all wrong. Ni ate chali chifu. God wasn't going to do it in a way where Moses got the credit. Katonda elite genda chikola muungeri yonna nga Musa yatwale ekitiwa where somehow or another a mighty Egyptian leader rose up and, and gave the slaves freedom. That wasn't God's plan. God's plan was to do it through miracles and to literally devastate the pagan practices and worship of, you know, the Nile God. Kakati inga okuita mbiya magirubinu, yali agenda kuba, e miyoyo juna, e mizimu ba na basaja jibali inga basinza, jibali ba kiliza no kukiliza munti ya jimu jali jiva munyanji, mumuga nairo. And all of these different gods that the Egyptian had. Elani banu ba katunda ba labo nabu na abamisiri bebali besi gamako. Moses knew what God's will for his life was, Musa alia manyi chi okwaga la kwa katonde liyo bula mbubu buchari, mbubu kwari. But he just supposed it was going to happen through his own natural strength. Musa aloza niti katonde alia genda kuzi samanyi ge agobu ntu. And ability and position. Nobu sobo ziwe, nechi foche nga mzukuru wa falao. And authority. Ile nobu yinza buya ina. And he went out and he messed up the entire plan of God. Nari oka furuma, na agenda, na chankala nya, intige kaya katonda, eriobo la mwe. And delayed God's plan at least 30 years. Nari etida no kuruisa wo, okuo kutukirizi wa kwechi gambo cha katonda, kumpi e miyaka ama kumi asatu. I'll probably explain that on tomorrow's broadcast. Nzikiriza binobye njo gede nja kuongere okubi kunyonyola masa wo. But Moses just figured that he could bring God's will to pass. Kakati ye Musa ya loo za mbuongo wenti, mungeli ye mwobe indala sobulo kutukirizo kwa gala kwa katonda. And his own strength and own power. Nga kwe seza maanyige, agobu untu. Did you know we do the same thing today? Oma yenti na fengaba ntutuko le chintu chechimwe muna kwa zina. The scripture says in 1 Timothy chapter 3 when it was giving the qualifications of an elder. Kakati oma yenti ebya wandiki wa vikula gabulu unji, mchitabu cha timo seu. Echisoka, esura ya kusatu, wibali bogira kumundu, ya ina kubei na ngomu kulembeze, mukanisa. It said, don't put a person into leadership who is a novice. Oru nyiru gamba burunji, inti oye ya kalokoka, tumuteka nga mchifocho obu kulembeze. And the word novice means a person who is newly come to the faith. Ile chigambe chichinyi, chita gireza dela ono baby, e yali ya kalokoka, umundu nga takuza mchigambo cha katunda nga muto ya kalokoka. In other words, a, a young, unmature, unproven leader. Kakati ulu nyiru kula gira dela, nga chelugeza kotegeza, unu umuntu nga ya kalokoka, echigamu chakano tana chiteka mungkola, tana ba kotegeza bintu biyamu yonga webikola. Don't put them in a position of leadership. 
Kakati olinyirugambi enti togeza no muteka mu kifo cyo bukulembeze chonna. The Bible is clear. Bible inambulu kufunyo. And yet did you know in the body of Christ we violate that all of the time. Ni ato manyite ebisere bisinga mu biri gwa Kristo echo tetuchigoberera. You know I remember when BJ Thomas Eranz nzijukira omusajjo omu gubaitanga BJ Thomas. Uh, he's the one that wrote the song about raindrops keep falling on my head. Kakati yo musajja eyawandika oluyimbo olulugama anti enkube etonya ngeje eyika kumutwe gwange. And I forget the exact time but back in the 60s or 70s. Or... Nesi chajukira bulunji mwaka cho musajja nungo eyawandika oluyimbo ono kireka jali yo miyaka jenkaga. Or some some somewhere around there. Oba kumpi mukasera ku kenyini nyini. Uh, he was just really popular. O musajja ono and he got born again. And he became very public with his commitment to the Lord. And immediately he got put on the 700 club. Program ngabo gamba ama TV gabi serevi yunga program wemu jibaita 700 club. And he got put on all of the television programs and they started using him because he already had the acclaim. Neba mwijita neba tandiko kumute kumute kamaso ga kamera kukubanti ya idea already aino tutumu yali ama nyikido yali serebu miyaka jay of people and they thought well boy this will be great to have somebody that people already idolize and look up to and have them uh, become a spokesman for Christianity and so they put him in the front and he started speaking out on his Christian faith but did you know that violates what the word of God says about don't put a novice in a position of authority and yet people just constantly think well we know better than God this is a great opportunity and again I'm not familiar with all of the details but this is a generalization that uh, uh, BJ Thomas started saying some things that weren't right according to scripture and so the Christians who had pushed him to the front of the line and used him as an example the very Christians who had promoted him began to criticize him and for some of his beliefs and it was because when he got born again he, he didn't get his mind instantly renewed it took time to change the way he thought. And so when the Christians came out and criticized him, well, he got into the flesh and he criticized them back. And he fell out of favor with the Christians and became somebody that they scorned and years later again I'm not sure the exact time but 20 or 30 years later I heard B.J. Thomas say that he never should have been promoted. He didn't know what he was talking about. But he's grown since then. He had changed some things. And 
and uh, it was just a bad experience for him and it gave the enemy opportunity to say see this person who claims to be a Christian is rejected by the Christians and and it highlighted the strife in the body of Christ. And it just wasn't a good thing. But you know why it happened? Because somebody, they were just looking at things in the natural realm. And thinking this person, millions of people know him. He will be a great spokesman, so let's ignore what the Bible says. And let's just put a novice into a position of leadership. And you know what? We suffered because of it. And it happens all of the time. There are people that know what God's will is, but they aren't prepared to live it. And they don't know how to follow God. They aren't they don't have their mind renewed. And if God was to put them into that position that they so long to have, they'd blow the whole thing. Because their mind's not renewed. They aren't ready for it. You know, with me, it's been 53 years since I had this miraculous encounter with the Lord. Lord, I've actually been born again for 63 years. But 10 years after I got saved, I had this miraculous encounter and was called to walk with the Lord. And I've known for 53 years that I was supposed to be reaching people all over the world. And it was frustrating because I had this vision in my heart. And yet people stayed away from my ministry. By the tens of thousands. And it was frustrating. But did you know there was a growth process? And because I was submitted to God and I wasn't going to kick the doors down and make it happen on my own. I, I didn't have the ability to make it happen on my own. I just had to be patient. And in God's timing, now God has opened up the doors and God has allowed me to reach people. All over the world. But I had to I had to learn. I had to wait. And you can't put a novice into that position of authority. And yet we constantly just lean unto our own understanding. And we think that this person is a banker, so they'd be great to put on the board. And 
kakati engeji ya kaloko kakati umuteke mchini na chifecha wa guru of directors of this church abedomu kuba directors be kanisa ya fe not necessarily techina kubeda buwe chitio are they a novice echibuzo chichinu muwele do they have spiritual maturity aina akuze mbintu biyo muoyo just because a person's got a position, just because a person is famous, because they're popular. Urukumanti o muntu alinechi fechine ne government. Urukumanti o muntu wa manjiki duwa serebu mchibuga wano. Urukumanti o muntu buli omamu manji. Because they've got money or whatever it is. Urukumanti o muntu wa ina sente. Uwa chine echi la cholinzo kwa ogera ko. We need to follow what God's word says. Tulino kugubili ya chi echi gambo chaka tunda chichi ogera. See, this is a part of how to find follow and fulfill God's will. Umainchi no chechitundu, echo kubango osobolo kusula, ogoberele, elotu ukirize, okwagala kwa katonda. And leaning unto our own understanding, and edafe, okwesi gama kukutegera kwa fe, trying to take shortcuts, ngatugeza kukunonya, ekuberi singo obumpi, to make things come to pass. Tuberenga tutu ukirize evi ino kutukirize wa. Always, always get us into trouble. Buli chisera, buli kasera, era buli bude, ibu tunakolecho, chijia tule itiranga vizibu. So here's Moses, a person who is destined to be killed at birth based on Pharaoh's command. Kakati wanu tulaba Musa, umwani ya liya ino kutiwa, ngazali dua, ukusinzira kuchagiro chaka waka falao. He not only escaped death, teyedu kabudu sikufa. But he wound up being raised in Pharaoh's very house. Neate ye kanga, ngate akuli de munyumba ya fala o mwenyini nyini. The man who had commanded him to be put to death. Atuli ye nyini ya liyala gide, nti Musa atiwe, nebatoba ne. Wound up raising him, paying for his upbringing. Ye kanga, ngate akuli de murubiri, nga fala o nyini nyini ate, ya sasuli de okukula kwe, ya sasuli de abulichindu chuna chuna biagendo okulia pampa emere bulichimu. Educated him, he was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. He was a mighty warrior. He had all of this power, people willing to follow him. It just made sense that that's the way that God was going to do it. Eira, chali chikola makuru, ba chali chikola, chali chikola makuru, kubanti, au liyali nzokuru zanti, buwati wakatunda bairi agendo kuchitu ukiriza amu. But it didn't make spiritual sense. Na yungu kakasa, chali, mwusi yomoyo, chali te chikola buwe chitio. It wasn't God's way of thinking. Eya siya liyendo uza ya katonda. The Bible says that God's ways are higher than our ways, and His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Isaya tano mutano nyiruwa muenda, Baibuli ya game enti, ama kubo gange, Bwega singa, bwega tiyo, ama kubo gamwe. Nebido uzo biyange, bwebi singa, bwebi tiyo, ebido uzo biyamwe. We can't lean unto our own understanding. Mubu yinza wa fete, tulina kwe sigama kubido uzo biyafenga abantu. You know, in a way, I feel like I'm belaboring this point. Umanyinze ngo mtu, mpuli na munda ya genga ngeza kukubanga, nzika tidi zenso ngeno berengo sobulo kujitegera. I've said it, but this is so critical, and most people don't learn this. Banange chino chukuru nyo, na ya bantu hawasinga, tebani naba kuchigira, tebati geza kwa una kuchiga. They say, oh yeah, yeah, and then they will just go ahead and scheme and try and figure out how to do things on your own. Baga mbabu gamete, chitufu, chijaku bawo, elane tebako mabukomi yao. Nibintu ni bageza kukulaba, nga bageza kukuyi, yenge jiba gendo biko lamu. I'm telling you, you need to get to a place to where you have no confidence in the flesh. Ngukakasa, oinu kutuka mchifo, obamu bula mubu, ungatocha alina wes gebo na mumubidigo, obamu bido ozo vya obamu manye gongo mtu. Paul said this in Philippians chapter 3. He says, I have no confidence in my flesh. Paulo ya gamba mwa Filipi esule yoku satu, ulinyiri yoku satu, nditea ina wesi gebo na buateka mumubidi. A way of saying this in modern language is that I don't have great self-esteem. Mungeli endale yoku chogira munga wa tuchogira mungombo ya feyalero. Tinzengo mtu sina che neulira munda ya ngentu neulira nche ulira. And there's a lot of Christians that just believe, oh no, you're supposed to think you're awesome. Umanyo wali ya waluko la balabanji, abakili zanti, umanyo ino kwe uli zanti, oliburunji, oliburunji, oliburunji. Well, you, by yourself, if you were to somehow or another separate God and His influence in your life. Kakati, gwengo umuntu, singa tuba tukwa udene katonda. Nebi, intubi yako zembola mubo, netuwa ula, gwene katonda, netukuteka kumabali katonda, netumuteke eno. You are not awesome. Gwemunda yo, mumubiri guomu. 
All of sin and come short of the glory of God. Jeremiah 17:9 that the heart is evil and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Apart from God, you are not awesome. You do not need to have self-confidence. You need to have God confidence. You need to get to a place like like Paul, you could say, we have no confidence in the flesh. And it wasn't because he wasn't an educated person. And he goes on to say, I'm educated more than any of you. I was raised at the feet of Gamaliel. I'm a Hebrew of the Hebrews. Pharisee of the Pharisees. Touching the law, I was blameless. Man, Paul was awesome in the natural, and yet he said, I have no confidence in the flesh. This is the man that wrote half of the books in the New Testament. And the reason God could trust him with that and keep it from giving him a big ego is because he had learned not to have any confidence in himself. His confidence was only in Christ. He says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, Philippians 413. Not I can do all things, period. But I can do all things through Christ. Paul found his total identity in Christ. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul had become dead to himself dead to his own ability. He had no self-confidence. He had Christ confidence. I can do all things through Christ. This is where we've got to get. And this is the mistake that Moses made. It says in Acts chapter 7 that he supposed his brethren would have uh, understood how that God by his hand would deliver them, but they understood not. Acts 7.25 so he knew God's will. But he thought he could accomplish God's will because of his position. His power and his authority. And again, lest we be too critical of Moses. Most of us have made this exact same mistake. 
na yaba singa kufe tuko zensobi ye mweno mwesa jiyakola if for some reason you know exactly what God wants you to do I would say that the vast majority of people try and bring God's will to pass through their own strength. Their own power, their own wisdom, their own ability. Did you know one of the ways you can tell where you are in this battle between you doing it yourself and trusting God? You know one of the ways you can help evaluate where you stand in, in this, what progress you've made? Is to turn over to First Peter chapter 5. Obero ino kuchuka no gena mpete de chisoka esula ya kutano ulunyiriru wa mkaga. Where it says humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Ngulunyiru gameti kari mwewombe ka mwewombe kenga wansi wa mkono gwa katonda. Casting all of your care upon him because he cares for you. Ngamumu sindi kilizi ganyanga ye okwela likilida kwa mwe kona kubanga ye ate kwa omuoyo. You know you, how you can decide whether you really humbled yourself. Or not. Is your care cast over on the Lord or are you bearing the burden? Are you staying up at night scheming and trying to figure out can you not sleep because you're under so much pressure? Are you staying up at night scheming if your care isn't cast over on the Lord, then you haven't truly humbled yourself. And humble doesn't mean that you're you, you think nothing of yourself. Humble is talking about that you have given all of the responsibility to God. You have submitted yourself. It's God's problem. You've given the problem to God. You are not self-willed. You are not trying to do it yourself. You don't feel the responsibility to accomplish it yourself. You're letting God accomplish it. That's what humility is. And you can tell if that's where you are by are you still taking care? You know, I had somebody just say to me yesterday, well, take care as I was walking off. And I said, for nothing. Amen. And the Bible says you're supposed to cast all of your care over on the Lord. Philippians chapter 4, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. We aren't supposed to be under pressure. We aren't supposed to be burned out and struggling. If we are, it's because we are trying to accomplish it in our own strength. Not 
NOT ONLY SOME SECULAR OR UNGODLY THING, BUT YOU COULD EVEN KNOW GOD'S WILL. BINO TEBE GENDA BUGENZI MUBINTU BIABULI JO, OBE BINTU BIENSI BIO KABIO KA. NIUSU UDOKU BANGO LIMU LOKOLI, NGO MANYINO KUWA GALA KUWA KATONDA BUEKULI. BUT IF YOU ARE TRYING TO BRING IT TO PASS THROUGH YOUR OWN STRENGTH, NTI YADO MANYO KUWA GALA KUWA KATONDA, ERI OBULA MUBO, NENTI SINGO BOGEZA AKO, OKU BANGO KUTU UKIRIZA, MUMANYI GO GUENGO MUNTU. AND YOUR OWN POWER, NOBU SOBO ZIBO. YOU'LL BE BURNED OUT, YOU'LL BE STRESSED OUT. You'll be under all this pressure. You need to grow to a place to where you not only find out what God's will is, but then you grow in your relationship with God to the point that you say, God, this is your problem. You're the one who called me to do this. You're the one who's leading me in this direction. So all of the responsibility for making it come to pass is on you. Now let me say what I am not saying through that. I'm not saying that that means you just you know, quit seeking God, go pig out, watch, you know, lay on the couch and watch as the stomach turns all day long saying, God, it's your problem. No, you can pray and seek God, but, but God is the one that you were depending upon. Not yourself and not your wisdom. And as you fellowship with God, if he speaks to you and tells you to do something, well, then you do it. And you follow through. But you don't do it just on your own. You know, when we were down in Colorado Springs, the Lord told me to finish out a building Debt free. And it was $3.2 million. And at that time, based on what our income was then, that was a huge amount of money. I'd never even come close to one-tenth of that amount of money. And it was just an impossible task. And my staff kept saying, aren't you going to contact your partners? Aren't you going to tell them what the need is? And what God has told you? I said, well, I will eventually, but I just... I didn't feel inspired to do it at that time. And I've learned that you only get one chance to make a first impression. And when I went to them and, and shared with them about what God told me to do, and to do it debt free, I knew I couldn't just do it on my own. I needed to have God lead me and show me how to present it. And so we were in a critical situation. We had started construction and I had to stop it. And 
because we ran out of money. And God told me to do it debt free. And so my staff was saying, when are you going to let your partners on? When are you going to write to them? And I said, I will when God inspires me to do it. Nabagamba bwenti, nti njia kuchikola muma sao, singa katonda nungamia. When God leads me to do it. Katonda bwa nungamia kuchikola. And I think it was four months or four and a half months, and finally God just dropped something in my heart. Nenzi kiliza cheka waita we mieze na, uwa enane chitundu. Waliwe chigambo katonda chia sula mutima guange. And I just went to my partners and told them, and in 14 months. Elane ngende liba partners bange, nimba nyonyola, we raised that additional $3.2 million. And that was in addition to all of the other expenses. We had, I mean, it was the greatest influx of cash. That we had ever had in the ministry up till that time. And it was because I waited on God to tell me what to do. I didn't just, I had a need. And I had partners. Banange na ina echizibu, na ina echetago, na ina neba partners abali basobolo kuchigonjola. And so it made logical sense that you just go to them and tell them the situation. And Kakati mageza agobu liwo, chali chilabi kabula visinti ugenda bugenze liba partners ibu noba gama chino cheneta, aga chino chechigendo kubawo. Ask them to participate. Ila noba gama tibandange mumpagire musongeni. But I didn't just do it because it was logical. I waited until God told me to do it. Saachi kula bukozi kubanga magezi gange chigaliga and when God spoke to me, everything worked. So I'm not telling you that when you cast your care on the Lord that you just forget God. And become a couch potato and, and watch all this junk and fill your life with, with foolishness. No, you continue to seek the Lord and you're listening, but you're waiting on God. I speak to you instead of you trying to do something and asking God to bless it. There's a difference. And I know that there's people watching this program right now that God has revealed his will to you and you're trying to bring it to pass. But you are under pressure you're under stress. You're struggling. And I'm saying this by the Spirit of the Lord. I don't, I can't see you personally, but I believe that God is speaking through me. That there are some of you that just need to come to this place that God I'm giving this to you. Wali waba mukumwe, nga weta agotu kwe kudala li nerigama anti mukama, omugugu guno ngu kudiza, obuwele zabu no mbu kudiza, obufumbo guno gwe ya bu mpabu uvu mbu kuwa de. I know it's your will, but nze manyikuwe kwa gala kuna ye. You have to do it. I'm gonna follow you. Kakati ngeenda kubi kudiza, mchifocha anzo kule mbeda ngeenda kutunulida go kule mbeda nze nga wengo vedida. I am not gonna ask you to follow me. Mukama sigeenda kuda muku sabagu gogo vedirevi yange vienja galo kola. I'm not gonna get in and try and fix this on my own. Ida sigeenda na geza hako kubange bintu bino mbitele za manye gange ngo mtu. And you need to humble yourself. Ida weta aga okweto waza. Ida katonda. And submit to God and cast your care about it. Over on the Lord. Oje muluku kire katonda, oberengo kasuka, okwela likirira wako kona, ngokumuka sukira, yata ndiko kwela likirira. And it may not be something that's easily done. Chini nzo kubanga siche chintuwe chigendo kubelele changu kukola. It may be a struggle, you may have to do it more than once. 
Chiri nzo kubanga chigenda kuba moko la fuba nanga. Togenda chuko la munundi gumugo ka. Wabule minundi minji. But you need to just say, Father, this is yours. Newe ita gotu ke kuchigire chigama antitata. Chino nchi kwasiza. And you need to take a step of faith. Newe ita gotu waliyo ni dala ilioko kiliza. And you need to quit trying to fix the situation. Ule kilao, okubango geza kukulaba ngembele enu. Ojitele za mumanyi go. You need to let God fix it. Now stay in tune with him. Olino kukiriza katonda abaye kengeli jachu samwe mbireno. Na yate chinocho na chigenda kuba wonte. Olino kusigalango chali mungkola gana na ye. And he may fix it through you. Katonda embere na linzo kujichu sa okuita mugwe. He may show you some, but you make sure that it's your response to God. Nekuludu la katunda linzo kuba ke chindo chimu chakula ga engeli jogendo kuchikola mu. Na ye chinocho na china kufanti gwe. Chogendo kukola ochije kukatonda ya kubulide. Instead of you trying to get God to respond to you. Nga chino techifu deri gwe kubango geza kukola bibyo no sabaka tonda abiwo mkisa. See this is what Moses did not do. Chino chenyini nyini chengeza kukogirano. Chenyini nyini Musa chata kola ngo muntu. Moses knew God's will. Musa yamanyo kwa gala kwa katonda. And just suppose it was going to happen through his position. Kakati naluuza munda yenti katonda agenda kuzi sa H4 chenga nga mutabani. Oba mzukuru waka waka. Through his might, through his power. Okuita mchifoche, okuita manyige, okuita mbusobo ziwe. And he wasn't depending upon God. Irenga Musa, yaliti yesi gamia katonda. Forty years later, he had learned to be 100% dependent upon God. Kakati nga wei sawe miaka ana, Musa onu, yamala na ige somoli ya burunji. Kakati nga yesi gamia katonda, emirundi chikumi kuchikumi. And that's when God used him. Kakati Musa bwe yatuka kuchigiri eche chokubanti yesi gamia katonda chikumi kuchikumi. Awe nyinyi ni katonda wei yatandi kilo kumuko zesa. So there is a progression here. Kakati bino bili mwe mitendida. You need to find out God's will, but then you need to let God do it. You need to learn how to follow God. Olino kuzulo kwa gala kwa katonda liyo bula mbuo. Neate kuludu lala, olina no kuganya katonda. Oberengo oyiga, engiri yoku mugo beri la mu. And depend upon him, not only his will. Erobe irengo subala no kuige ngeri jogendo kumwesi gamako. Siku agala kweko kakoka. But his way of doing it and his timing. Nene engeri ye jaya galo kuchiko la mu. Nebi sedebe njini katunabe ya galo kutu kiliza mwe chintuecho. Tomorrow I'm going to share something with you that was revolutionary. Unakurencha ngeenda kubake chintu chenkubi kulida. Nkula gengeri ye chintu chino. Jichariwo. To me about the timing. Of God. But we let you get a copy. Sera, a bit too full. If you could do it, is a way to enter your natural natural country. I got a colleague for accomplishing His will, and I promise you, this would be a blessing. It don't come as a chino chigina kubi da muke serio bula mubo. Thank you for listening to the Gospel Truth Program. We believe that you have been blessed. Please call us on zero two hundred three three zero 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 to pray with you or to make an inquiry or share your testimony with us. We speak healing into your body and prosperity into your life. You are blessed. Are you in sickness, in deep thoughts, drowning in depression? You feel stuck and nowhere to turn. Andrew Womack Ministries and Caris Bible College invites you to the healing experience. Every last Thursday of the month, starting at 5 p.m. at Park Royal Mall, 5th floor, along Buganda Road. God is a faithful God. When you believe on Him, your healing is always available. Your healing is today.